go ahead and be creating um, the bubble wand and I will be mailing that out to you. So I'm going to guide you and teach you and show you all the many ways that you can create the bubble wand on Tinkercad and make your own design. Um, so I'm going to give you a very simple um, design of the bubble wand and then afterwards I'm going to let you uh, play around for a couple of days. So today is Tuesday. Um, so probably by Thursday, I will mail it out to you just to give you that day for tomorrow to just play around and create your own design. And after that, I will have access to download the file, print it here, and then mail it to you guys. So that sounds uh, like a good plan to me. Um, and with that, I'll also be able to send some um, math uh, fun sheets to your parents, um, understanding a little bit about math and circles, circumferences, diameters, things like that, um, that are just going to be easy, simple, and fun um, to incorporate with your wand. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you, and you should be able to see the Tinkercad classroom, okay? So I'm going to share that over here. So on your browser, I want you to go, whether that's Google Chrome, Firefox, or internet, open that up, and I want you to type in tinkercad.com, just like it is at the top, tinkercad.com. And this is what you should, oh, well, this is my page, but uh, you'll go on to the Tinkercad original website. Once you're on there, you should be able to scroll down and you're gonna find the button that says join a class. I don't have that. You don't have that? Okay, let me see here. I'll stop the share um, and I'll pull it up on my other monitor and kind of figure out where it is that the button is located. Okay, so when you go on to Tinkercad, uh, what is the home page that you see? Do you see the sign of like the little dinosaur that says flat is boring? No. She signed in and it says my recent designs and it has her name. She signed okay. in the link that you sent. Through the, through the link? Yeah. Okay, so if you're already on that part, then what you're going to go ahead and do is just click on the work plane or the new design. Create new design. Mm -hmm. And you should have the work plane. Yep. She's got the work plane. Yep. Thank Perfect. You. You're ahead of the game. So that's where I'm at now. And I'll go back to sharing my screen. So this is what you should have, Allison and Akshay? Yeah, I have that. Okay, so this is where you might need help with parents, um, and if parents are around to help. Um, I want them to basically be able to see my screen and their screen next to each other, because what I'll do is I'll guide them, um, and they'll just basically be doing the same thing on their portion. They don't necessarily have to see me. My image of the Zoom video call can just beat up on a little corner somewhere. So let me know once you have the screens set up. I'm good. You good? Yep. Actually, you're good? Yeah. Okay, cool. Great. So you guys are good. This is what you have in front, yes? The work plane? Yes. Yes. Cool. So to start off, we're just going to go ahead and rename it. Um, Right here at the top, you might have different names. Um, mine says Epic Cassie. We're gonna go change that and just type in Bubble Wand. <coughs> so now we have given um, the file a name. So for today, um, it's gonna be something very simple um, to start off. And really the point of this seminar is to guide you using the basic features to then be able to create so many other things, okay? Um, so first off, uh, 
what we're going to do is we're going to get familiar with simple shapes. Um, and I'm going to explain how the mouse is going to come in hand. So right here on the left side, or at least on my left of the screen, you have this cube. When you click on different sides of the cube, you will see that the work plane changes. You can click on the top, on a little corner, and what that does, it just moves the perspective around, you see. You can hold it down and kind of spin the circle and it goes crazy. Um, if you wanna bring it back to the original view that we have, just press the home button and it goes back to normal, okay? So the home button is important because sometimes you might get lost in the work plane, meaning that you will zoom in way too close or zoom out way too far out that you don't know how far in you are, something like this. So the way that you zoom in and out is just by scrolling up and scrolling down. Um, click the home and it brings you to that page. Now we're gonna go ahead and right click. And as you right click, Hold it and move it around, and you should be able to spin it. Okay. Are you guys able to spin the, the paper around? Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, so the reason why I teach you this is because as we start adding shapes, you want to be able to kind of get in there and see if the shapes are matching and things like that, okay? So this is going to be right-click. Um, Left click, we'll just highlight pieces and we'll see what when that comes in hand, okay? I'm gonna go back to home. And we're gonna go ahead and start off. So right here, we have our basic shapes, okay? So to make the wand, um, the first thing we need is gonna be the actual wand itself, right? The length of it. So we're gonna click out the cylinder, just click and drag, click and drag, bring it out to the work plane. Zoom in a little if you want. This is how I have mine. And when I click away from the work plane, there's nothing. I click on it and you get something like this. Okay. Well, this, we're going to change it. This is going to be really the, the handle of the wand, right? Like if you have a wand, the main actual part that you would uh, hold. So this has to go flat. So right now it's kind of like upwards. We're gonna lay it flat and we're gonna stretch it out. So first, let's flip it. So to do this, you can see some arrows out here. Um, I'm gonna zoom in. Oh, another feature with your mouse here is that if you take the scroll and you press it down and you move the mouse around, you'll be able to move the whole image. So press down and then move around. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so here in the back, we have this little um, two sided arrow. I'm just going to show you guys don't need to do this. But when I rotate it, it leans, you see. So right now that's at zero degrees. If I move this to 90 degrees, it lays flat. Right. So that's what we want. So we want to go flat. So you go you find this two double-sided arrow, and you lay it flat, just like that. Wait, we're supposed to do that? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, so it's like this. I'm going to zoom in, click on it, and go to 90 degrees, just like that. Once you've done this, I want you to click on the side of the top of the cube right here on the uh, perspective cube. Click it just like that. And what we want to do is that now we're going to rotate the piece on the work plane. Not that way. But this way. Okay. So right here at the bottom, there's that double sided arrow again, and this changes the orientation of it. So we went ahead and rotated it and now we oriented it to where if I click the home button, this is what I have. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Cool. 
So you guys are both on this part. Now we're gonna change the dimensions, so the measurements, okay? Um, and again, I'm kind of just putting it at the best view for you guys. You don't have to keep changing it at the same view that I have it. Um, so right now, I'll just put it here. We're gonna click on it, and then you get these four gray boxes that when you put the mouse on it, they turn red. We're gonna change the measurements, okay? So right now it's saying that the length of it is 20.35 millimeters by 20.35 millimeters. So we're gonna click on that corner. I clicked on the bottom left. And for the measurement on the left, we're gonna go ahead and change that. Um, and let's go ahead and make this, let's see here, leave 55. You can actually go ahead and make it 60. So it makes it just a little longer. Now, right now we have a giant just log looking thing, right? Um, and we're gonna shrink this, the width of it. So we're gonna click on that corner again, click. And instead of that 20, we're gonna turn it into three. And as you zoom in, it looks like a wall, right? It looks like a very thin wall. And, and that's where you can kind of get a little practice using your mouse to right click, scroll, zoom in, zoom out. What we need to do is bring it down. So we're gonna change the height of it. Now we change the length and we change the width. To change the height, we're gonna click on this gray box on the top here. And you see that it says 20, so that's the height from the top to bottom. And we're gonna change that to also three. And now we have a little rod. Yes? Is yours a circle? Um, this is what mine looks like. Mine's a stretched out circle. Or a Stretch. Yeah. Mine. Is it like a ball? Yeah, but it's longer. Mine's like an oval. Okay. Okay, let's go back <laughs> to... Let me backtrack just a little bit. So we got to this part correctly, yes? Yeah. Okay, so after this, we clicked on one of these corners. Uh-huh. And when you change this, you change it to uh, 60. I have that. Yeah. Okay, and then it might come out of the plane and that's fine. You can click on it and push it back onto the plane. And then from here, that 20 turns into a three. I have that too. Okay. Did you get this shape? Yeah, I didn't get that. Yeah. And then I changed okay. the height to three, and then it still is a circle. Okay, so for that, you might have clicked on the wrong corner here. So I'm gonna click on the shape, and it's this one here. It's on the top. I think I did that. Hang on. Couldn't change the width for some reason. I think I have it. Yeah, it says three. Okay. I couldn't change the width for some reason. The width? Yeah. You can go back and try it again. Like if you zoom into the picture, see? Oh. Right here on the corners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, Allison? I, it says three, and I, when I click on the top of it, it says three. Hmm. Okay. Do me a favor and make the Zoom call uh, your main screen. And on the bottom, 
I think you should have the option to share screen. Well, you're on my computer and I'm using my mom's computer for the design. Oh, I see, I see, okay. Turn my camera on and like show it to the screen. Yeah, let's do that. Turn the camera on and point it towards the mom. Okay, one second. Okay. So if I zoom in, oh, hang on. I can't do it. It's all right. Oh, okay. It's okay. So I stopped share just so I can get a bigger view of your screen for right now. Okay. Mm hmm. So, okay, so what you want to do is press the home button on the perspective on the left side. Remember that home button? There you go. So that looks good to me. It's just like a circle, though. Well, it's a wand. But there's our oval. Oh. Is the oval at the other end? Um, or is this where you're talking about that circle right there? Whoa. Yeah, no, this is what we want. Mm hmm There it is. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's see if you look into my screen, this is what mine looks like. Right here. But you just looked oval. No, so that's probably just the angle from where you saw it, because sometimes like if I turn it like this. But you're on the right track with me. Uh <laughs> Yeah, okay. it might have just been the angle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could you take, Thank you. Could you yeah. look at mine? Because, like, I don't think it looks like that. Yes. Um, let's see here. So. Mm. Wait, how do I share my screen? So, if you make the Zoom call big, and then on the bottom you have your main menu. Yeah. There's a button that should be called share screen or you press the key alt and the letter S together. And then it's going to display like your different tabs and then just click on Tinkercad. Perfect. There we go. So go ahead and click on the home button for me. Okay, and zoom in. Oh, I see what you mean, like it's slanted? Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. What we can try to do is we can work around with the rotation. So remember those double-sided arrows that you see faintly in the back? Yeah. Try, that, try to put that at 90, and let's see what that does. Oh. There you go. Oh, OK. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yep. All right, and then you can just click Stop Share at the top. Perfect. So this is where we're at. Okay, so for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just do leave that there. Click on it, and then right here, you should be able to see the lock button or control L and just click on it. And that just means that this shape, no matter what, you can click on it, it won't move. It's set in place for right now, okay? Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves a uh, cylinder. So click and drag another cylinder out and it can be somewhere near uh, that general area. Okay, and I'm gonna, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna change the color so it's not orange. You can pick whatever color you want. I'm going to go with green. 
And this just allows you to kind of visually different parts in different colors and things like that. Once you have done that, um, we're going to go ahead and change the dimensions of this. Okay, so we're going to zoom in. And to give yourself more space, you can click uh, on this arrow right here, and that's going to hide the shape panel, just like that, to give you a little bit more room. You can press down on the scroll and move it around. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the dimension of this instead of a 20 by 20 to a 18 by 18 millimeter. There, just like that. Which and then we What was it? What corner did you click on? Uh, one of the bottom four. So does, does it, it doesn't matter. Mm -mm. As long as it's one of these bottom four corners. For eighteen to eighteen. Yep. Mhm. Mm okay. Okay. And now we're gonna bring it down. Okay. So we're gonna shrink it, and we're gonna click on the top corner. So instead of that 20 right here at the top, we're going to bring that down to, let's do, uh, let's do two. Yes, two. And it should look kind of like a coin, like a token. Shrinks all the way down. Is that what you guys have? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Now, let's go ahead and go back to our shapes. Click on the drop down where it says instead of basic shape, we're going to go to all shapes. It says shape generator and click all. And if you give it a second, some of those shapes are going to change. And you see there's shapes that have already been pre created, like walls, little kind of uh, houses or whatever. We're going to go to page number three. So if you scroll to the bottom on page three. And we're gonna click on, let's see here. We're gonna click on gear. Just regular gear should be the orange one. And you're gonna click and drag. And I'm gonna change the color of that to I'm going to go with yellow. It looks like a little sun. And from here, we're going to hide the shapes. So we have three shapes. We have our rod, a coin, and the gear. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change the many gears into a bunch of little teeth. And that's really what's going to become the outside of the bubble wand. So when we create the wand, you have the handle, and then you have the circle. And then in that circle, you have little teeth that kind of hold in that soapy water. Um, so that's what we're going to do with the gear, OK? So this gear, we also have to change the dimensions. So I'm going to click on and make a little bit more space here. And we're going to click on one of the corners. I picked the bottom left. Bottom left corner. And we're going to change it to 19.2 on both sides. 19. And it shrinks just a little bit, not, not by much. And the height of it, instead of six, it's going to be four. Again, changes just a tad bit. OK. Now, do you guys have this menu right here with the inner radius, outer radius, number of teeth, height of teeth? Yes. Yeah. OK, so we're going to make some changes to these numbers, and that's what's going to give us supposed to be again. What was that? How tall is it supposed to be again? Four. Four millimeters. Mm -hmm. OK. So for number of teeth, instead of six, we're going to go ahead and have 20. So press 20 and enter. And it looks like something like this. So 
So you should see 6, 10, 26. And because the teeth automatically take up more space, we're just going to double check. And when I go to that corner, look what happened. That 19.2 that we had, it changed to a 20.76. So we're going to go ahead and change it back and tell it that, no, we don't want it to change it for us. We want to keep it at 19.2 on both sides. So you might have to always check your, your measurements there, okay? The height of it is still four. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna just click on the yellow and bring it into that green token. It doesn't have to be perfect and I'll show you why because there's a hack. So just kind of put it just like this. So it looks like it's in there, okay? It, you, you, it doesn't have to be perfect. It could be like that for all I care just as long as it's touching, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna click and drag that red box that you just saw. So when I click, this little dotted red box appears. Just click and drag over the two shapes. Make sure you don't get the rod, just the token and the gear. And we're gonna use one of the cool features about Tinkercad, and that's gonna be the alignment process. So if we go up to the top, Right here, you have that gray rectangle and, or that white rectangle, the gray square. You click on it and you get these dots. Are you guys following? Yes. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the bottom center dot and then the other center dot on the, on the left side. So for mine, it didn't do too much, but in reality, what it does, it shifts to the center to align it. So let me give you a more dramatic example. I'm kind of just gonna put it right there, right? I highlight it and then I go to align and I select this centerpiece and this centerpiece and you saw how it automatically moved it for me, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what the point of the align feature is. It just aligns everything together. So now if I go to the top using my perspective cube, you can see how it's pretty centered, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to have to zoom in. Um, not super, super close, but I mean, enough to where you can see this. And using the uh, right click of the mouse, you're going to want to get to a perspective something like this. And what you're going to do is you're going to click click on the token. So, I mean, mine's green. I don't know what color yours is. But click on the bottom token, not the gear, the bottom token. And using this special arrow, it's just a little red triangle. When you hover your mouse over it, and you're going to move it up once. So it looks like that. All good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, technically, this is our bubble wand, except for the fact that this is, we need a hole here, okay? We need a hole right there. So we're gonna go to our basic shapes. So bring the shape generator out. Instead of all, go to basic shapes, scroll up, and we're gonna take a cylinder, just click and drag. So clicking on the cylinder. Now this cylinder can be changed from a actual 3D space to a hole. So remember when we were changing the colors? Right next to that, there's a hole feature and it's just kind of a transparent circle. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the dimension of the inside and we're gonna make this 12. By 12, enter. And it looks something like this. Uh -huh. You guys got it? Yeah. Wait, so now what I'm doing is I'm Wait, converting what this again? 12 by 12. Oh. And Wait, then the height, the height can be just six. Oh. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and change the height there, Allison. 
Okay. Instead of 20, we'll just make it six. Got it. Something like that. Okay? Uh -huh. And we're going to bring it in here. Again, it doesn't have to, you, kinda, you can see the shadow there of where it's at. It doesn't have to be perfect because thankfully we have the align feature. So what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to click and drag. And we're going to go over here to the align. And we're going to click on the bottom center and the left center. And you see how it automatically centered it for us? When you click away, that hole is there, okay? It's telling us that it kind of cut out the two pieces. Wait, those now what two, we want, what was that? Those two squares don't, uh, I can't click it on mine. So you have to highlight the pieces. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. So you gotta click from the bottom corner and over them, just like that. Okay. And once you have them all highlighted, you go over here and align it. Yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. So this is what it should look like. You have that token. We changed the dimensions and we moved it up. We brought the gear. We added more gears or more pieces to the gear. We aligned them. And now we have a hole that's going to cut out that circle in the middle. Okay. Now what, to make, what? were you able to get all of that? What circles do we press when doing the aligning? Um, you're gonna press the two center ones. So this one right here, and the one on the left in the center as well. Got it, thank you. Yep, good question. Okay, so now lastly what we're gonna do is we're gonna group these three shapes into one, okay? So we're going to click over them, make sure we grab all three. So the token, the gear, and the hole. And we're going to use another feature that's up here. And it's this square with kind of half a circle and it's called group. Or you can do control G. When you click on it, it should highlight it all red. And then it turns to piece like this. Is that what you guys got? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you see where we, we're pretty much kind of done with this, right? Mm -hmm. um, where I'm going to click on the home button. And now you can see how I have this part and the rod. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring the, the bubble um, center. And we're just going to put it into the rod. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to align it with the align feature. So I want you to zoom out enough to where you can see both shapes. And you're going to make a box from the bottom all the way to the other top corner. Oh, you know what? Before we do that, we have to unlock the rod. Remember how we locked it in place? Yeah. yeah. We have to unlock it. So click on the orange um, wand and the purple lock to unlock it. Now it's going to allow us to do that feature of uh, aligning it. So create the box and we're going to align. And this one's important because we're only using one circle to align. And that's going to be the bottom center. And mine was already pretty much aligned. So it didn't shift it by that much. Okay. You can click away once you're done. Um, and I'm just. Light problem. What's up? I went to the middle. Okay. If you press control. Z, it's going to undo it for you and take it back. Um, and that just means that you probably accidentally clicked on the wrong align feature. Uh, let me show you. So you probably clicked on this one. And it looks something like this. But what you actually want is the one on the bottom. And the one on the top? No, just the bottom one. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, we're good. You're good? So yeah. now what I want us to do is we're going to zoom into that connecting point. Um, so using your mouse, which is why the mouse is important here, is you're going to zoom as close as you can. And I want you to click the green out and back in. 
so you can bring it out because you don't want the wand like this, okay? Because it's not gonna pick up the soap, but you want it to be in there. So I'm gonna leave mine like this to where I don't see orange on this side, but I know that they're connecting. Does that make sense? Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> You basically just want to make sure that your wand and the ring are together, but you don't want the wand to stick out from the inside of the ring. You see? Oh, so that's what we're doing. We're just going in and we're checking that out. Because I've I've made the mistake where I get the wand to kind of stick out here and then like I print it and it doesn't work. Okay. So lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to group this. So now we have two pieces left, right? So we're going to go ahead and highlight this, just like that. And we're going to use that group feature again, or Control G. We're going to highlight the whole thing, like the wand and the brush thing? Yep. Mm -hmm. Because that, what that's doing, it's basically telling it that it's one, one giant piece. So when the printer is printing out, it knows to print one piece, even though it took a bunch of little pieces to create it. Wait, what were we supposed to do? Highlight both of them. Okay. And then on the top, we use that group feature. Yeah. Grouping. Yeah. And you click away and it turns into one piece, all one color. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Cool. So now what we're going to do is you could leave it at that, but I like my bubble wand to have a grip. Um, so we're going to add a ring right here at the bottom of the wand. And that's just going to be for you to kind of like be able to hold it and not have to like really dip your wand and your fingers into the soap. You can just kind of hold it from the top. So we're going to get our basic shapes. Scroll down and you're going to look for Taurus. So under the basic shapes, Taurus, click out and drag. You can just put it somewhere in that bottom section. And let me just see here something. Oops. Are we changing these two? Not yet. Let me see what's best. Okay. Yes. Okay, yeah. So that radius, go ahead and change that to 15. And it should create a big circle. Uh-huh. Um, the reason why we're making this this big is we just want the radius across from the inside, but we're going to shrink it down. So we're going to change the dimensions and move it here. I'm going to put the shapes away. We're going to click on the top right corner and we're going to change it to a 20 by 20. Okay. okay. And now we're going to move the, the actual wand with the ring into that tortoise shape just like that. So it kind of looked like this is bigger and that's kind of what we're going for because a lot of the times it just it's easier for your finger to go in that blue ring to hold it and then the wand sticks out, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to bring the height of it down because right now if we see here the height of it is 4.97 we're going to change that to three, just like that. And you can kind of see that maybe it's not centered or something like that. Well, this is where you can use that center feature or the alignment feature. So you click on the blue ring and the wand, go up to the align feature, and you're just going to use the bottom circle, just the bottom. 
and it shifts everything into perspective there. Did you guys get it? Yeah. yeah. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna make all of this one piece, highlight everything again, and group. And there we go. Everything should be one color. Uh-huh. And that's the end of a simple, basic, basic, basic bubble one. Okay. Now, this is what you have. I want you to highlight it. Control C to copy. And then you're going to uh, right click and you can do uh, paste or you can do control V, which is faster. And now you have two. Now, the reason I ask you to do this is because we're going to, the first one we made, the original, we're going to put it off to the side and we're going to lock that one in place. Okay. And what I want to challenge you guys to do, and you can continue to do this today, you can come back and do this tomorrow. Um, but I want you guys, and we're going to ungroup it now. So that second copy that we have, we're going to click on it. And right here, there's an ungroup. It's a box and a full circle. Do you guys see that? Yeah. So click on it, and all the pieces become ungrouped. You can do it to the top, too. So now we have the ring, the wand, and the, uh, the holding, the grip holder. What you can do is you can take that ring and move it out. You see? You can actually keep these grouped if you want. That way you don't have to worry about it later. But then these, what you can do is you can do copy, which is control C and control V. And as you move up, we don't have to change anything about the, the shapes for right now, but you can do something like a double circle, something like that, you see? Uh -huh. You can align them. I recommend aligning them out here. So if I bring them together like so, it's better if you align them individually like that and then bring them together, you group them. And again, these are features that you guys both know how to use. So now it's one, you see it's not two. And you just put them on the rod and look at that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So with that, um, that kind of concludes the teaching portion of this seminar where I've uh, been able to guide you step-by-step step on how to create the ring for the bubble, the wand, and then an outer circle to just kind of hold on to it. And I've also explained on how to develop and create more advanced designs. Um, you can change by all means the, the inner circle. So originally um, we started with an 18 by 18 by two. You can make it mm, 25 by 25 by three. Um, and that's just gonna make a bigger ring, right? So you guys have the freedom to play around with the numbers. If you have a piece of paper or if on your computer, you wanna open up Word, um, by all means, feel free to do so. And I can give you the dimensions for some of the shapes that we use. Another thing that might be easier is if you just copy that original ring that we made, you can always change it like I just did. And keep the little ones there if you wanted to. You can make those smaller. I will say not to go under um, 15 though because it gets harder to print. But look at that, I just made a mini or a Mickey Mouse uh, 
looking one. So we make this a little bit bigger to a 30 by 30. Put that on the wand. Bring the two little ears. And you can follow that. Look, look at that. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Yep. Do you guys have any questions for me? No. No. You guys are good? All right. Well, um, your parents should have my email. So I want you guys to, you know, play around with it, practice a little bit more. I will be printing out this, um, the, the one on the left um, for you guys. And then if you create something else, like let's say you have a second wand, I will create it um, or I will print it uh, for you once it's already been created. I will go ahead and print so today's Tuesday. I'm going to give you guys um, tomorrow to go ahead and, uh, you know, create a new design and play around with it. And then by Thursday morning, I will go ahead and print out whatever uh, files you have because I do have... Um, I believe I should have access to both of your designs. So if I go out here, just bear with me a second. Take a look at all this thing. Oh no, seems my internet's a bit slow. So Allison, this is what I see. I'm not gonna go in it because you're in it right now, but this is like what I see, the purple one. Uh -huh. And then the little circles. So um, on Thursday, when I go in, I'm gonna go ahead and print the original with whatever other wand you have created, okay? Okay. And same thing for you, um, Akshay. I can go ahead and go in here and just look at the file um, and see the original wand with the new one. So I'm going to say, make sure you keep that other one locked in place. Yeah. You can go mm -hmm. out and, you know, copy if you need to, but you don't want to mess with it too much. Um, but if you need to get a hold of me, if you have questions, um, just let your parents know to email me with your question and I will get back to them as soon as I can. Okay. Um, let's see. So I see yours here, Akshan. Yeah. Yeah, so again, have at it, um, but those are just some simple ways in which you can use some of those features that are included in Tinkercad, okay? Yeah. All right, guys, well, um, that concludes the Bubbles and Math uh, seminar. I wanna say thank you for joining, thank you for signing up, and also keep in mind that there's other seminars coming up, um, such as the elect uh, electricity and circuits, um, where you're kind of sewing in, like, electrical um, components. We also have uh, intro to programming with microbits, um, which is a tiny computer that was developed in the UK. Um, you can sign up for that. Very simple. I love it. I actually will be teaching that one again. So if you want to see me again, <laughs> sign up for the microbit one. Um, fun, simple, and easy. So I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy and have a great night.